Welcome to episode two of CrystalCast. All information provided is for the use of financial intermediaries only and should not be passed to potential clients. Bridging finance is an area which seems to divide the financial services community. Some brokers love it and see it as a great solution for their clients. Others look at the reputation it used to have and maybe see it as a product of last resort. In this episode, we're joined by Crystal's newest recruit, Harriet Smith, industry heavyweight formerly of Borrow, then Masthaven, and also formerly Business Development Manager of the Year at the Specialist Finance Awards. So we thought we'd get her opinion on what bridging finance is actually like, how it can be used, and where the opportunities are in today's market. To start us off then, Harriet, can you give us three things that people might not know about you or might be surprised by? Okay. Um, most embarrassingly, first, probably to get it over with, and very truthfully, um, I did, when I was younger, want to marry Ainsley Harriet to become Harriet Harriet. <laughs> that was a good number of years ago, <laughs> just to be clear. And I was, I thought that'd be a good, strong name. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, in terms of a couple of other things that people might not know, just a bit of background. I... Um, been in, working in finance since 2011, um, always been in a lender background until now, so I wanted to try the packager side. Um, originally started with a degree in marketing, um, so I'm not sure how I ended up here. <laughs> um, and then in terms of what I always wanted to be when I grew up, I, it was just mainly in charge. <laughs> and as my mum said, I've always been bossy, so I think uh, that probably suits the speed we need to get things done on in Bridging. Um, and my absolute worst phobia would be I'm completely and utterly scared of heights. So even to the point where I think at a concert that I'm going to fall down <laughs> into the stage. So wow. yeah, that's probably, probably <laughs> my share for the day. Okay, brilliant. Well, hopefully most people will know you from your Masthaven and prior to that borrow days. What attracted you to the packager side of the fence? Um, A couple of different things really. First and foremost, coming to work here with you guys. Um, You've always been an account of mine for about five years, something probably in that region. Um, We've always worked really closely together and always just felt there's a really good energy and enthusiasm to the office, um, which I've actually seen more than ever having had my first month end today (laughs) with you guys. Um, And I know that's going to be a particularly good day. yeah, and then beyond that, it's more ability to have the total free reign of placing a case rather than just being restricted by a single lender, lender sorry, and a single product portfolio that I've had in the past. It's always horrible when you see a nice case that you have to say no to because it doesn't fit criteria. Yeah. Um, when now I'm here, I realise the ability that there's so much ability to place such a big variety of cases that I've never had access to in the past. I'm doing a lot more refer cases than I've ever done. Um particularly in like commercial HMO, that type of asset as well. So that's been really eye-opening. Um, and then also just being able to see a case through kind of from start to finish. As a, as a BDM, you kind of have this strange interaction for a really short period of the transaction, especially when I was on the term side towards the end. But on bridging, it's, it's less so, and you do see the entirety of a case, but not necessarily every element to it. You know, you, yeah. you end up at, at this side of things being the assistant for like the solicitors, the accountants, the client, the sub broker, absolutely everybody. So it's nice being able to juggle every point of contact to make sure they all pull together in the right direction. Brilliant. So that suits your um, ambition of being in control. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Brilliant. So you just mentioned you finished your first month at Crystal. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously it's relatively new to you being on this side of things. Uh, what would you say is the biggest change from the lender side? Um, I think again the variety of the cases Um, you don't know what's going to land on your lap and at what stage it is and what level of urgency I think is the difference you get we've got one that needs value in tomorrow that we're just making our Valfi quotes on Um, whereas there's a lot of cases where it's maybe uninhabitable at the moment so although time's an element it's more so that it's a bridge for need as opposed to time scales so just managing the difference between the, the different cases really okay excellent so again, you've been working with brokers now for, for a number of years. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing a broker today? Um, the new landscape in terms of case that a bridge represents. It used to be um, a time dependent type scenario or again unmortgageable. Now, whereas we're looking, at, I think I've probably had 60% plus of my cases that have landed on my desk in month one have been 
requiring works on a property so changing use changing number of units a lot of stuff where it's going to become a HMO obviously given the nature of the the market currently Um, and that obviously doesn't it sits outside of the remit generally for your standard mortgage broker Mm -hmm. obviously we get a variety of people introducing to us here you know from accountants to um, people that do specialize themselves in uh, this type of case but maybe need help on a particularly difficult one but for a normal mortgage broker that's used to looking at affordability etc looking at a case where works are involved is so beyond the normal remit that's probably the biggest thing that we're seeing people needing our help with okay great um so on the back of that then you've you've mentioned obviously hmos refurbs that kind of thing Mm -hmm. where do you think the opportunities are for today's mortgage broker Um, I think obviously, you know, where we are in the Midlands is particularly strong market at this moment in time in terms of uh, capital growth, especially Birmingham, you know, we're we're going to be receiving HS2 and when you're up in the city centre at the moment, you really see the activity that's coming off the back of that, you know, HSBC have got their head office that's live up there now, uh, having a lot of investment in that part of town. So I do think that could be a real growth area. I know it's quite saturated in terms of student property, but I've ha- been to a, a lot of talks where there's been mention of opportunity maybe in the higher end properties to let for you know your professionals that are maybe working for, for HSBC and now atten- attending a different head office, for example. Yeah. So I think there's some real opportunity in the Midlands. Um, and again, just coming back to that H- HMO change of use so that people can get the, the biggest uplift in um, asset value at the front end to then be able to keep it on their books for now until we get some stability in the market. Excellent. Well, in the last edition of Crystal Cast, uh, Mark Goldberg was talking about the, the maybe the term trends that they've seen mm-hmm. where buy to let landlords are looking to purchase properties and hold them for yeah. a lot longer, whereas previously it might have been like a tart and turn type scenario yeah. or something like that. Um, so from what you're saying there, that trend seems to be continuing. Yes, very much so. There's a recent poll on Bridging and Commercial News where the question was, do you think mortgage networks sufficiently educate their ARs on bridging finance? And the the current state of that is staggeringly 96% of respondents saying no, with only 3.5% of people saying that networks do enough. Wow. Have you, have you got any thoughts on that? Um, certainly alarming, uh, considering we all know what opportunities are out there Um, in terms of the type of cases. It is crucial for brokers to be educated in the ability to spot the opportunity for a bridge rather than potentially, you know, there's certainly conversations that would go on that would say, you know, come back to me in three months, X, Y and Z around your pay slips, you know, uh, around some adverse credit, something along those lines, or it's just not habitable at the moment. Have you got cash to be able to get it to such a standard? Whereas we know we could, that's something we'd be able to help with easily. So it's something... We've been working on heavily here, but I do think it would help for the networks to be more on board. It's the, the trend is moving towards very much events in the, the network space. And, you know, again, when I was doing the term side of things, that was something you're attending weekly on multiple basis around the country. But you don't really end unless the lender offers asset uh, lending across all of the bridging from yeah. to term you're not really getting the opportunity to be educated about those sorts of things because your specialists like ourselves aren't there to be able to do the education yeah. and in the ability to spot a deal okay yeah we're seeing more and more lenders coming to market offering that kind of holistic solution mm-hmm. where you can take a bridge and then maybe take development finance or refurb finance and then take a term loan as well so more and more lenders are switching onto this it's something that, that rates are now ridiculously low at times. Mm-hmm. What we're we looking at, 0.43, 0.44 from some, some mm-hmm. lenders. So it's something that, that we're championing that brokers should be looking at, should be considering it as a solution. Yeah. And there's only so much time you can rely on PTs or on, mm-hmm. or on re mortgages from two year fix or something like that. Brokers need to be looking at, at offering these solutions. Yeah, it's the way the market's moving. You know, people aren't just buying stuff and retaining it on their book that's you know like you said tart and turn and existing kind of property that's standing there people are making these changes to an asset that they've purchased then retaining it in their book so they need this, this type of funding day one but then potentially as you say move on to a term product with you know you like a few shore brooks where they give the client um a, a discount for being able to move from their bridge to their term product so something we look at the whole life cycle of the client for in the same way as the broker will they just need our help probably doing that a bit more do you think there's a perception issue with bridging maybe people look at it as a product of last resort yeah i think that's probably the old-fashioned view i mean mm-hmm. when i was lending 
even at, at Borrow probably about five years ago, totally wouldn't have been unheard of to be issuing terms 1% plus around the 1% mark. That would have been competitive. You're yeah. looking at a completely, completely different landscape that's really good for the client. At this point in time, you know, there's lenders out there with money. They've got, everyone's got liquidity. They want to lend. It's, and that's what's creating this competitive market where the client, that the client can benefit from. You know, especially with no exit fees, a lot of people having no minimum term, maybe one month's minimum interest. You know, it's very easy for the client to get a very reasonable cost for opportunity to purchase. And it, it is no longer a product of last no. resort. Um, what we're, we're wasting the biggest growth is brokers that are spotting opportunities, for example, in, in chain breaks or mm-hmm. um, where equity release was a previous option. Maybe now they're improving the property and selling it to get a better return. So it's not necessarily a, I've got a problem, I need a bridge. It's how can we maximise the opportunities for the clients, mm-hmm. especially with buy-to-let landlords, with investors looking to maybe expand their portfolios. Again, you touched on HMOs earlier. It's something that you know, no broker should be ignoring, really. No, it won't, it won't be. The outlook's completely different than it used to be in terms of the asset classes. So a lot of com- business we'll see is commercial, semi-commercial, um, either remaining as such or move into a different asset class as well. So something people are seeing the opportunity in. So obviously this podcast is around bridging, but there is another B word on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously Brexit coming up. Have you got any thoughts or input on where we are with that currently? Um, I see it certainly as a, an opportunity in the bridging space uh, outside of the wider market because there are certainly opportunities that are presented in conjunction with Brexit with the taxation changes that have come into place that are potentially leading to some landlords putting properties on the market and whole portfolios to the market, um, which can present opportunities to, um, to buy with people needing to carry on business as usual, but maybe potentially prices being slightly lower for those property opportunities. Um, and both those things coupled together, if there's something that's at a nice price or uh, an urgent need to complete, pe- people will look to bridging. And it's actually counter-cyclical in that way, really, to the rest of the wider market. And if people can have the ability to have cash at a point in time like this, they will do very well um, in the longer term if they can retain stuff in their book. And we can present them as a cash buyer by looking at stuff on a bridging basis. So. That, that's the upside. Um, the only downside I suppose we're seeing from our perspective is, yes, LTVs are healthy with all the lenders, but the reality is what is the surveyors saying yeah. and we are seeing, you know, some cautious valuations from some surveyors, probably surveyors in the main, particularly your London assets, especially mm-hmm. trophy assets. That makes everyone particularly nervous at this moment in time. You know, after it got announced... London saw its dip immediately in a way that nowhere else has and it's probably stabilised since then and it's created we've created our own problem in that sense by talking such up such a, a potential problem that we've actually reflected that in the in the values of property in London but uh, I think that's just a nervousness probably harking back you know to the credit crunch as as many of them will remember but um, that's something we can all fight back on and we, we have a number of cases you know having experience in this basis we've had cases where we can potentially contest that and and you know look at comparables and try and get a sensible sensible valuation out of someone and at the end of the day if it's a purchase you know you've got a, a good chance in obviously yeah getting what you need anyway yeah and britain has always been a property owning culture uh, we saw it after the last mm. recession transaction numbers did drop but people still need to buy homes people still need places to live we haven't yet fully embraced that European model, I suppose, of, of living in HMOs or shared properties. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants their own flat or their own house. Yeah. So it should give opportunity for investors um, because pe- people aren't buying, they need to rent. Yeah. So therefore, if you've got a portfolio of properties, you might see increased demand from yeah. the rental side of things from there. Alternatively, we're seeing a spike in second charges as well, where people might have thought they wanted to sell and move, mm-hmm. but are deciding to stay put and improve instead. Yeah. So again, as you know, we've got options on second charges, on refurbs, on, on mm-hmm. bridges, even term loans that people can look yeah. at there. So it, it depends how you look at it. Could be bleak, could be an opportunity. It depends on your, your mindset, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. And I, all I can say is we're incredibly busy, aren't we? <laughs> you know, yeah. and that, that fills me with confidence because uh, there's nothing more nerve-wracking than thinking you're going to be tapping your fingers thinking where's the next deal coming from. We're not seeing that in the slightest. So 
it makes me think that we're being resilient to what could be a potential nervousness. Yeah, and it does come to a point where it just needs to be business as usual. Mm-hmm. No one knows what's going to happen in at the end of March or even beyond that, but people still need to do business. Yeah. So therefore, you know, Britain's that stiff upper lip culture. We're just getting on with it. Yeah, you know, exactly. Business is there. Let's make the most of it and do it. Yeah, and it's just getting ahead of the curve. You know, what's the next trend in property? People are. It's not. They can't make money the way they were previously, and so they're just trying to figure out the new way that will suit the current regime of tax, etc. And that's what they're doing by looking at your HMOs, etc. And your change of use and, and anything under permitted developments. That's obviously a strong piece of the market. So I think people are just trying to adapt quickly and faster than their peers to be able to, to take advantage of any opportunity before anyone else cottons on, really. Yeah, and that's where a good broker comes into their own, really. Mm-hmm. Because they can see that, but also that they've got the answer to that question. Yeah. Buy to let landlords aren't going to disappear. As you say, they're just going to look at the next way of making money. Yeah. So if the broker can jump on that and say, do this, or here's an opportunity for you, then happy days works for everyone. So finally, if you could make one change to the market, what would you be looking at? This could be something from a business point of view, something from a personal point of view. What would you want to change and why? Um, gut feel, having worked at a single lender and having you know, been a kind of month in here, it would just be continuity in processes across all of the lenders would make all of our lives easier. Um, mainly just in terms of, of generally just the way the cases are submitted and the requirements no surprises last minute. I think that's that's the only thing we can all kind of ask for. But again, that's probably me just seeing the side of the coin that we're within uh, as as the packager and seeing the whole of market. So I suppose that's where we're we're adding the value really. So, um, but yeah, no, I think that's that's probably the only thing that I've seen is a bit of a headache so far. It's one of the messages we try and get to brokers: the fact that tell us the deal, mm-hmm. tell us what's and all. You know, let us know the problems, let us know the good points, yeah. because then we can find a suitable home. Um, you'll know from your lending days things come out yeah. if you don't tell us something it will get found out and it will just delay the process and make it Very all true. that more painful um, if we could get the story up front perfect it makes a nice smooth transaction for everyone yeah and I think that's again part of the education piece for us and for the wider market to mm. tell people what they need to be asking I yeah. suppose which they don't necessarily know we know and we need to pass that on yeah we feel we've got responsibility and, and the wider industry mm-hmm. to educate brokers into um, the different areas and, and what they should be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, brokers on their own aren't going to learn about bridging. They're not going to learn about seconds. It comes to networks or packages or even lenders to get that message out there and for the brokers to want to hear it and want to do yes. the best for their clients. Yeah, and it's worked in second charge, much stronger than bridging. Bridging's probably the next one to be the focus, I suppose. Well, that's been brilliant. A nice insight into both sides of the fence, the lender and the broker side of things. So thank you for that. Uh, hopefully the people listening have found that interesting and your details will be on the crystal cast page for people to contact you should they have any inquiries perfect look forward to it brilliant thank you thank you to hear the rest of the series and be notified first of future episodes hit subscribe and to discuss any of the topics covered in today's crystal cast or any other specialist finance requirements call us on 01827 301070 or visit our website at www.crystalsf.com. Thank you to today's guests, and as always, thank you for listening.